Okay, let's take a look at uh, the box office from this past weekend. So, for those following the show, I have, I have switched to a new box office design. I took some comments and suggestions from people and have, have, have made a little bit of modifications to it. Uh, so feel free, if you still have, uh, you know, comments about it, feel free to drop them in the chat or comment on this or what have you. But let's take a look at the box office. So, opening this week, we have at number one, Twisters, right? The sequel, I guess like semi-sequel? So, uh, from my understanding, it's it's essentially a standalone sequel. That it's not, re it doesn't really have anything to do with the original, but it still takes place in the continuity. So it's not quite a reboot. But in any case... Uh, this has done very well. So it opened to 80.5 million for the weekend, um, which was a big success considering that it was projected to be anywhere from 60, uh, excuse me, 72 to 79. So it, it, you know, didn't wildly exceed expectations, but it definitely still exceeded at least my expectations, right? And again, the fact that, you know, this has been kind of the story of the 2024 box office in that, you know, we were in such a we were in a malaise for so long that even bigger even the, the biggest films opening like for the longest time Dune Part Two had the biggest opening and it was only like oh what was it like maybe this but maybe even less right um like it may have been even like sixty five or seventy million when it opened but Inside Out Two really just blew the blew the you know blew the doors open and I think it just got people. It got people in the theaters, and then when they're there, and they're, they're eating the popcorn, and they're seeing it on the big screen, and they're seeing trailers, that people, I think it had the effect of people going, hmm, I miss going to the theater. I like doing this. Why haven't I done this? So I think we're seeing a lot of movies that, if they had opened in March, wouldn't have done as well, right? And again, you can make the argument, well, of course, the summer is always going to be better because the summer just always is better. Uh, and, you know, people are out of school uh, if you're, you know, a kid or even if you're, like, you're in college or something. But in any case, just the fact that this movie, off of a, an IP that is really not super recognizable, right? The original Twister is not this, like, iconic film by any stretch of the imagination. I think it's a film if you if you were maybe, like, a teenager or, like, a young adult in, like, the mid-90s. But I think it's kind of been lost to time in a way. Um, but anyway, so this has done pretty well, and it had the best per theater average for the weekend, um, about 19,000 per theater, um, which is, again, pretty strong. As you can see on this list here, it, it far exceeds any other film here. Um, and this brings its, you know, worldwide total to about 123 million off of a 100, about a $175 million budget. So it still hasn't made its money back by any stretch but again this is just off of that first weekend and from what i've heard it's had pretty good word of mouth so expect this to be a decent player in the in the weeks ahead uh also opening this week is i feel like this is like every week we're talking about this there's this uh, an indian film called bad news with a z coming in at number eight uh bringing in just a little bit more than a million for the weekend opening in just about 477 theaters um and this is like another import that is making it into the top 10. Um, again, I don't know why this keeps happening. That the United States, we can't make enough movies to perform well enough that all of our films in the top 10 are domestic releases. But in any case, I did want to highlight that there. Um, films continuing this week. Uh, we have Long Legs um, bringing in uh, just under 12 million, and this constitutes a 48% a drop. But an actually uh, increase in the amount of theaters, if you see here, it, they actually added about 340 theaters for the week, uh, for the weekend, excuse me. Um, so that's not like a great drop, but it's also not disastrous, right? And again, the fact that this movie opened as big as it did. Um, is is or it was already a success even if it was up for one weekend only right um but so now every every dollar it makes after that is just icing on the cake um people like i still have yet to see it i oh, am i going to see it i was originally gonna go see it last week and then it just got too hot i'm sorry new york city i just like if i had a car and i could drive and be in the ac until i get to the theater and then just hop out and run into the building that'd be a different story but Sometimes I just have to cancel some of these screenings I'm going to because it's it's just too hot. Um, but this goes to show 
if you have a, a cheap horror film that has an interesting concept, people will come out and it can and can kind of make that money back. So this brings its domestic total to just under 45 million and its worldwide total to about 47 million. Again, off of just a $10 million budget. So this has easily crossed the doubling its budget threshold to, to break even. So I'm sure, um, you know, the creators of this film are, are happy about this, right? Also continuing this week uh, in its second weekend is Fly Me to the Moon, the kind of romantic comedy drama about faking the moon landing, I guess, um, which did not open very well. And this is it is not good news for if you're part of the Fly Me to the Moon uh, creative team. So it opened it. Uh, excuse me. It this weekend it brought in just a little bit more than three, uh, about three point three million uh, for the weekend, and this constitutes a like almost a sixty five percent drop. Um, and no theaters were taken out. So it had the same amount of theaters as last weekend. Um, and it's just not worth... Like, basically less than $1,000 per theater, right? And and obviously, it's different all across the country. But let's say average movie theater ticket is like $12 or something, right? That means that, like, th- like each theater only had, like, 82 people coming. Roughly, right? 82 or 100 people. This brings its domestic total to about 16 million. Its worldwide total to about 31, but off of a 100 million dollar budget. Again, this definitely went to the uh, the cast, right? Because you have a lot of big names in this in this cast. Uh, so it's very unlikely this is even gonna get get back to the 100, let alone doubling its budget in, at 200, right? 200 million. Um, looking at a couple other films here, still in the top five, we have Despicable Me. Four in its third frame, it dropped from first to second. Um, you know, Twisters dethroned the minions, if you will. Uh, it brought in about a twenty-four million for the weekend. It, this was about a negative. Uh, this was about a forty-five percent drop, um, and this brings its domestic toll to about two hundred fifty-nine million domestically and five hundred seventy-four million worldwide, off of just a one hundred million dollar budget. So. Like I said last time, the minions, the minions rule. You know, they they are a consistent box office player. Um, to the point now where I feel like Illumination is just on autopilot. Like I have not seen this film, but from my understanding, it's just another Despicable Me movie, right? Uh, also continuing, uh, it's really really strong. Still is Inside Out two. Um, it's held its third place spot in its sixth frame, brought in just a little bit under under 13 million for the weekend, which was only about a 36% drop, right? Um, so this is far and away the most successful movie of the year, and I think now it's the second most successful animated film of all time. Um, and of course, that's not factoring in inflation, right? Because of course, movie tickets are just more expensive now, so of course, newer movies are, have, it's easier to get to certain box office thresholds, Uh, But in any case, that's still impressive, right? So this brings its domestic total. This is just domestic. uh, To, uh, what is it? About $596 million for the weekend. And uh, $1.4 billion worldwide. Uh, Excuse me, yeah. And $596, not for the weekend, but domestic total. Um, So it's made about a billion and a half dollars off of a $200 million budget, which is easily one of the more expensive films of the year. Um... But, again, it, it, it brought the money in, so it's a pretty good percent return, what we're looking at. Like, it's over 600% uh, return, right? So, and, and this isn't over, right? It's still, it's still, uh, what, what's a million? A million seven digits. So, we're still in eight digits, right? It's not even, it's not even below 10. 10 million. So, this could still just keep going and going for the summer. Uh, which, if you know anything about me, you know that annoys me because I'm not a huge fan of Inside Out or Inside Out 2. But in any case, it's again, it, it, like I said before, it opened the, it blew the doors off. It, it kind of shook people out of their malaise, so I have to give it credit for that. Also in the top five, we have uh, A Quiet Place Day One. Um, oh, excuse me there. I have my, I forgot to mute myself. <laughs> so we have A Quiet Place Day One, uh, dropping from fourth to fifth in its fourth frame now, bringing just a little bit more than uh, about 6.1 million. Uh, this is uh, about a, a, a 46% drop. So it's holding all right. Um, this is not a huge money maker, but it has been a money maker, right? So this brings its domestic total to about 128 million and its uh, worldwide total to about 241 million off of just a $67 million budget here, right? So it is still a percent return. It has doubled its budget. Uh, this, 
uh, will, you know, reinforce, I think, to Paramount, like, this is a franchise worth continuing. Because I believe this is basically on par with the other films so far, in terms of the opening it was. Um, but we'll we'll have to see, like, because again, I'm not really sure. You can't really go anywhere with the, the two original films. I feel like that story's over. Like the second film already felt like it was like kind of pushing it, uh, and with this story, it kind of ends in a way you can't really continue it. So I don't know what they're gonna do, but I'm sure I'm sure it's someone's job at Paramount right now to figure out how can we continue this franchise. A couple other uh, notable. Uh, you know, entries in the top 10. We still have in the top 10, Bad Boys Ride or Die. Uh, only dropping from 6th to 7th in its 7th frame. So this thing's been out for almost two months. It br and it still brought in, uh, what is it, two, about $2.7 million for the weekend. Only a 37% only a drop, right? Um, so this is something that, like, I, I, you gotta say, like, although it's disappointing to see this box office, like this top 10, and how much of it is... Uh, sequels or reboots are connected to some other IP. Because um, let's look here. So the only thing that's not based off of an existing IP would be Long Legs, Fly Me to the Moon, Bad News, presumably, um, and The Bike Riders. That might be based off of a book. I can't remember. But for all intents and purposes, we'll just say for... Um, for It's not based off of another film IP, right? So that's really disappointing. But I will say that looking at these, there is a diversity in a way. Right, so with Twisters, we kind of have like an action disaster film. Bad Boys, we have like an action comedy. Fly Me to the Moon, we have a romantic comedy. Quiet Place is more horror. Uh, Long Legs is horror. Inside Out 2 and Despicable Me are animated. Maxine is more indie critical darling or what was supposed to be a critical darling. Right, so, you, so there is kind of a diversity here. Um, and I think that's helping all the films. So they're not necessarily compete. Like, you know, like what, what are people... Like if you're not going to see Bad Boys Ride or Die... Like, what are the other films in this top ten are you going to see instead, right? Um, so it kind of helps give each film a little niche that it can kind of perform well in. So this brings its domestic total to about $189 million and uh, $388 million worldwide. Again, off of just a $100 million budget. Um, so again, this has definitely been successful. Uh, and then also, we have the Bike Riders, interestingly, had dropped out of the top ten. It was at 15th place last week. It is now back in the top 10, right at number 10 uh, in its fifth weekend. Brought in less than a million. Only brought in about 700000 for the weekend. But I'm not sure why this happened. Um, it had a 75%, 76% jump. And then usually when you see that, it's because they added theaters. But this, they cut theaters. It looks like they, they basically cut this by more than 50%. They cut... It's only It was only in 308 theaters... And it cut 416. So, so it was less. It was left with less than half of whatever it was last weekend. So I have no idea why this kind of popped off. Um, but it has not been financially successful. It only has brought in uh, about 21 million domestically, about 34 million worldwide, off of like a 35 million dollar budget, right? So it hasn't even broken even. It hasn't even crossed that threshold. So, you know. But again, films like this are more about the critical, you know, being critical darlings. But again, something like Bike Riders was not a huge critical darling. It was it was well-received, but not universally well-received. It's not, like, I don't think you're really going to see anything about this movie at, like, the Oscars or awards season or anything like that. Um, but it's definitely going to be interesting next weekend because we have Deadpool. Um, and I'm really interested to see how Deadpool is going to shake all this up. Maybe that's where you start pulling away from uh, Bad Boys Ride or Die, right? Like another action comedy. Who's to say? 